Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. This week we're going to go back a bit and have a look at a couple of little updates to the Tamiya Grand Hauler. I was in a bit of a rush to do the changes, so I didn't film as I was doing them. The reason for the rush? Well, I actually drove the truck on a proper layout. The first change is at the back of the cab. I think one of the major letdowns with the stock models is having to walk up to the truck and manually operate the release on the coupler. This mod consists of a 3D printed plate, a small servo and a new pushrod. The plate could just as easily be made from some plastic sheet or perhaps even some aluminium if you wanted to polish it. For those not familiar with the stock setup, the plastic plate and lever mount to the chassis. There's a linkage that clips to a ball and when you push the lever forwards it opens a coupler and lets the kingpin on the trailer slide out. If you look under the chassis, all we've got is a couple of plastic blocks to mount the servo, the servo itself, which is an old high-tech HS81, and one of the high-tech adjustable servo arms set to its shortest. Before we power it up, we will pop off the cab so we can see what's happening under there. We've got the usual 2.4 gig receiver buried under the electronics platform, and a WP1080 ESC off to the side. On the top we've got two PCBs, one is a light controller, the previous version of this one. It takes the signal from four RC channels, three of them to control the indicators, brake lights and so on and so forth. The fourth is an extra. It is however piped out of a six pin expansion connector. So the signal that controls the coupler runs to the light controller's fourth input, then off to the servo. This is important as the smaller board in front of the light controller is a wireless trailer add-on. I just about got it to the point of testing in the last Grand Hauler or trailer video. Now it hasn't changed, but it is now mounted inside the cab. The board has its own radio module that it uses to send a condition of the lights off to the trailer. But it's also sending the position of the fourth channel connected to the light controller. That means with a bit of thinking we can control all sorts of things on the trailer from our FlySky GT3B. If we power up the transmitter and the truck we can have a look at the linkage in action. I've set it up so what's normally one of the trim controls on the transmitter is controlling the channel connected to the HS81. Pressing one of the buttons moves the servo forward opening the coupler. It really doesn't take a whole lot of torque so you could probably get away with an even smaller servo. Pressing the other button, the servo moves towards the rear of the chassis, but because the linkage is only set up to work in one direction, the servo can move freely. We can happily couple up to the trailer without having to move the servo too, just like the stock setup. The coupler will latch on its own, but only open when we tell it to. The next part of the update is in the trailer. Some time ago we fitted the Tamiya electric leg set. But instead of using the rather old school electromechanical control setup, we just wired up a momentary toggle switch to operate the legs. Well, the switch is gone now, and the motor wires run straight into the box. So, to see what's going on, we're going to need to flip the trailer over and remove the bottom of the box. Inside, we're fitted with a big green board we fitted quite some time ago. And other than a slight change to the firmware, it's exactly the same. We've got the matching radio that lets us talk to the one in the cab, and to the right is the connector that goes off to all the LEDs mirroring the connector in the cab. The new bit is the rather hurried strip board with a breakout board that has a motor driver sitting on it. It lets the processor on the green board send it a signal to control the motor on the Tamiya legs. The motor wires come straight in and get plugged into a two pin screw terminal. That just leaves the battery holder, which is 3D printed of course, which is just stuck to the base with some servo tape. This 800mAh 2S LiPo is quite a snug fit, but once it's installed it's not going to go anywhere. There's also a switch mounted that disconnects the battery so we don't have to keep fishing out the plug. Right now, all the bits in the trailer are very much experimental. The green board isn't really a nice layout to fit in the box, and some of the trailers without the big box would be a bit of a pain to fit, but it is fully functional. If we put it all back together and power everything up, we can see it in action. If we turn on the running lights, you can see the ones on the truck and the ones on the trailer come on, more or less at the same time. So we have a working wireless link between the cab and the trailer. The button to open the coupler still works, but remember, the trailer is also getting the signal that's telling the servo what to do. 
So if we press the other button so the servo moves the other way, the trailer leg motor runs. Now there's a fair bit going on behind the scenes with this setup, but in the end you can forget most of the technicalities and it becomes largely plug and play. It's mostly just a few servo plugs and screw terminals. One day it might even get finished, but I wouldn't hold your breath. The date on one of the prototype boards is 2017 and we're almost in 2019 now. Anyway, the reason for being in a bit of a hurry was this. I decided the Grand Hauler spends way too much time on the shelf, and if I'm being honest, being indoors when it's cold outside does seem like a good idea. The group is the Midlands and South East RC Truckers on Facebook, and I believe they meet once a month, and it's a lot of fun. I'll leave some video rolling and leave you to it. So, as always, thanks for watching, subscribe if you haven't, like if you liked, and leave a comment if you got something to say. Bye guys!